suppose we should start Popo's Bizarre Adventures, right? Um, so, yes, that is the correct spelling, Karina. Popo's, Popo's Bizarre Adventures. As I was saying, for those of us that have been following uh, San Jose, um, have been following Popo's Bizarre Adventures for the past couple couple weeks, sorry. Um, San Jose Police Department has had just a uh, fucking spree. Um, they had a cop steal a bag of drugs from a scene and then go home and do it, and it turned out to be fentanyl. <clears throat> and he died. He died of an OD. The next week, San Jose um, has a three-month-old boy kidnapped at, a, uh, a, a, at an apartment. A uh, cop shows up drunk to that. Uh, also, a cop shows up and go, peels off and goes to like the, 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 the side room and just starts rubbing one out, right? Another incident, a cop fucking, one of their cops has a DUI on the freeway and has a little like bumper car session, all right? So that's where we are today as far as like San Jose goes, right? Now what we found out is that not, there we go. Um, what we found out is just yesterday, charges were filed for a cop a few weeks ago who showed up to a domestic violence call and masturbated there as well. So within the past few weeks, San Jose has had multiple cops show up drunk to scenes. Multiple cops show up to scenes and masturbate. And a cop die of a fentanyl overdose because he stole a bag of white. He probably thought it was cocaine from a fucking uh, from a uh, from a crime scene. Different cop, different cop, Aspen, different. These are all different cops. These are all different cops. Uh, Rev, no, it's a different one. These are all different cops. There's something in the water. Hint, it's Viagra. So yeah, San Jose, is it like a tick, another TikTok challenge to rub one out at a crime scene? Ah, the jerking it cops. That was two situations in month, one month, F fucking wild. Yeah, dude, that's, it's just, it's San Jose is just, justice just gets them horned up. Is what happens when the cops can't get laid? Mm, probably. Um, keep your fucking kids on leash. So, yeah, like San Jose just banging them up. I, I expect next week to see another San Jose cop <laughs> fucking tagged up for, for rubbing one out in a park or something. Um, all I can say is San Jose, keep up the good work. You make my, li my life easier. Um, you know. Uh, so let's uh, let's just throw this buddy this buddy's uh, fucking picture picture on the screen. Uh, everybody say hello to um, what's this douchebag's name? Um, Joe Don Chitwood. This here this here is Joe Don Chitwood. Joe Don Chitwood was a uh, Oklahoma police chief who was taken into custody after he found himself on the wrong side of the law. You see, Oklahoma's Bureau of Narcotics. Uh, arrested the chief of the Calvin Police Department because they were investigating methamphetamine distribution in the region. Uh, and good old Joe, jo Joe, Don, uh, Joe Don Chitwood here. Joe Don Chitwood was... Uh, <clears throat> well, he was um, helping um, sell methamphetamines in the county. Oh, uh, also using, by the way, also using. <laughs> uh, so, you know, when your chief of police is running meth for the area, uh, for the region, Oklahoma. Oh, uh, it is. It, no, it is. It is a t-shirt. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, And in other police news on the other side of the globe, checking in with our always, always fair and recognizing basic human rights on uh, the IDF and the Israeli police, um, the journalist who they assassinated, 
They assassinated her. They assassinated her. They murdered that woman. The uh, the journalist who was in that coffin, who they re, uh, who the Israeli Defense Force recently murdered. Well, the Israeli uh, Israeli police showed up and busted up the the funeral processions and kicked the shit out of a few of the mourners. Um, Israel always making making everybody look good throughout the region. Um, you can always count on these on the Israelis to like do some stupid shit like this. And you're just like, holy fuck, y'all! How 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 how? So, you know, just some more of it. Uh, yes, Israel is trying to blame it on uh, on Palestinian riders. The problem is, is that we have video footage of them doing this. Um, so <laughs> it's kind of a difficult one to do. Uh, that's all I can say. Um, uh, uh, pff, they can, you know, the funerals, ah, man, I mean, that doesn't sound crazy at all. Um, so, everyone. Everyone meets Special Agent Alexis Hatton. This is Special Agent Alexis Hatton. Alexis is an FBI agent. Um, Alexis was Special Agent Hatton here, was um, performing, a, um, he was performing a investigation. Um, he was investigating the Franklin County Sheriff's Office, which would be Panama City, Florida, uh, in case you're wondering. Uh, Yes, a spagent. Um, he isn't uh, Zippy. In fact, Special Agent Alexis Hatton here had traveled um, to uh, Carabelle, Florida in order to investigate the Franklin County Sheriff's Office because, well, there were numerous complaints uh, coming out about police corruption throughout that region. So the FBI was investigating. And in a roadside confrontation that was caught on body cam between Hatton and the deputies of the area, um, during six minutes, Hatton spent locked in the cruiser, um, he demand, demanding to be released, um, Quote, I can't believe this is happening. You think this is funny. It won't be funny after today. The hour-long incident that's presently under investigation by the FBI, um, he had scheduled an interview with Deputy Rolf Gordon to talk about a ticket that was one of the elements uh, within the police corruption investigation that he was looking into um, that had been issued a few weeks earlier. Um the cop claims that he was suspicious that Hatton wasn't a special agent. And since the agent's vehicle tags didn't track back to where he expected them, I don't know what he expected an FBI special agent's car tags to track back to. Like it was going to say, like, was it going to be registered to special agent Alexis Hatton, FBI? Like, what did, how does he think we register our vehicles? At like that sort of level. Like, I don't know what they expected, but apparently they tra they tried to trace his tags and it didn't go back to where they expected. And so they're, they're claiming that they ran his name through a database and that he came up on the terrorist watch list. And that's, that's according to the sheriff. And so like, yeah. Um, so an FBI agent, is investigating criminal police cor corruption in a county uh, sheriff's department in Florida. And the, the deputies try and arrest this individual under the suspicion that he's not an FBI agent. And when they get him out of the car, the um, it had spiraled to the point where Hatton would not put his hands down. You can see he actually keeps his hands up throughout the incident. And the uh, the officer, the agent held up his hands in surrender and, ref quote, refused to put them down even after the deputy said he could. Direct quote by Hatton, I don't want to be shot out here. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, just a fun developing story. 
yeah, just a just a fun developing story. Um, the feds know how the pigs work. Yeah, all cops are dummies. Um, yeah, scared of their own dogs. They are. They are scared of their own dogs. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. I'm sure we'll get some interesting stories out of that as the months and year drags on. Uh, I need more water here. Um, we're not going to show the video. Um, the video is available on the Discord server. There's links in the cop watch section. Um, so... Las Cruces, New Mexico killed a 75-year-old woman with dementia. Like, she, she, there was a 75-year-old woman literally having a mental health crisis. Her family called for help. Um, and the fucking, uh, the cops went in and shot her. Like, that's, I mean, that's the long and short of it. Um... Well, it looks like I found the corruption. Uh, <laughs> and none of the cops have, oh, yeah, no. Uh, the One of the cops just goes, I'm sorry for your loss, but they're going to go ahead and take her, okay, to the fucking, like, the family member. Um, yeah, she was confused. She was f frightened. Um, and the cops just fucking stormed the fucking building and basically, you know, yeah, shot her. It's an old woman. It's an old woman. Fucking, yeah. They maintained she had a, yeah, she was holding a kitchen knife. She was, she was holding a knife. It's a 75 year old woman in the middle of a fucking like dementia crisis. And the cops are like, knife! But, but don't worry. The 18 year old shooter who literally like executed, uh, who, who fucking like went around and lynched a bunch of black people in a goddamn supermarket was taken alive by the cops. See, when the 18-year-old dude who had, like, clearly racist intentions shot up a store with a fairly decent plan of action and put down a whole bunch of bodies, those, those, those cops, not fearful for their life whatsoever. He was captured alive. They weren't concerned in the least. They got him no problem. But the 75-year-old grandmother who, uh, who has dementia, who's confused and just standing there with a kitchen knife, her they fear for their life from. So they had to shoot her. They had to shoot her. Like, you know, that's, that's just necessary, apparently. Um, next thing you know, they'll charge her for police-assisted suicide. Yeah, yeah, um... I don't even, what was her name? It's something Baca. Amelia Baca. Amelia Baca. Uh, and there's the footage. I don't need to watch it. Uh, I, dude, I, I don't care if she was fucking like this. Like, Jesus Christ, get a taser. <laughs> they just fucking dropped her. Like, you know, she's 75 for fuck's sake. The taser would probably do the job. Jesus Christ. Oh, so yeah, good old, good old luck Cruces. That's, that's one thing you do have a problem with in, uh, in, uh, New Mexico zippy is Albuquerque. Um, like the Albu Albuquerque PD, I know by reputation alone. Um, I mean, you know, it's like any other place, right? Yeah. Your cops are fucks. Like, yeah, your state's like got some pretty based fucking policies that you guys have been pushing through, but your cops have a reputation. So are you guys highest in uh, police shootings now? We had it for a while. We had the highest officer-involved shooting rate for years in Las Vegas. But we got some uh, heavy press coverage. So they, they worked on that. Not, they just covered up better now. <laughs> hey, we lead the nation in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Albuquerque PD. It's got a fucking reputation. I don't know anymore with her. Uh, I'd rather get stabbed than call the cops on a mental patient, at least in this country anyway, says Crimson. I know, right? So, um, 
So we've mentioned before the California sheriffs, um, the San Bernardino sheriff, um, fucking um, Shannon Dick Dickus 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 Dickus. Let's go with Dickus. Um, Shannon Dickus. It's it's a man, even though he's named Shannon. Um, fucking the San Bernardino sheriff's department has been stealing cash like highway robbers from logistics companies, um, fucking armored trucks that transport cash for state licensed cannabis businesses. Right. Um, Imperial logistics has reached a, uh, uh, a settlement with the San Bernardino, uh, sheriff's department, which seized over a million dollars from Imperial's armored cars over the course of several heists. I'm going to, they were heists. Um, the Justice Department, which was holding the money pending fe- uh, federal asset forfeiture, agreed to return all of it last month. Uh, according to a statement, Imperial and Sheriff's Department issued on Friday, both parties understand that each was acting in good faith when the stops were conducted. Wink, wink. Um, and have come to an understanding that will enable both sides to move forward amicably. They're... Um, they made off with uh, three three occasions. They made off with one point one million dollars. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it was civil asset forfeiture. Yeah, it was a hundred percent. Yeah, all my stealings done in good faith too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, they were actually acting as highway robbers. They, um, that's what they were doing. Um, it was an easy target. It was technically federally illegal. All they had to do was call the DEA, get a, a, like an agent approval. Um, what if Vegas cops see my stream and tell other cops about, uh, other cops about Popo's Bizarre Adventures is what it is, man. Um, if, uh, if another Ve- if a Vegas cop happens to be watching this Las Vegas metropolitan police uh, department, I know you're one of the most corrupt police departments in the nation. I'm well aware of your record. Um, you were there during the occupy movement. Um, look back through your records. You probably have some full face photos of me because frankly, you were there attempting to disrupt and, uh, perform agent provocateur, um, uh, ele- uh, 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 actions within the, uh, development and, um, uh, uh, direct actions that we were taking within the Occupy movement. Also, I'm more than aware of your fucking propensity for shooting people. Um, you shot that guy right in between the eyes during the um, BLM protests. You put down that fucking veteran in um, Costco. Um, no, no hesitation. That guy didn't even have a gun, and you guys just fucking summarily executed him. And then you took your police. To, then you took your uh, press, re, uh, press resources department that's dedicated to dragging the victim's name through the mud, and just tried to absolutely ruin that guy and his family, only for a couple of years to go by, and then us to find out that in fact you have a department dedicated to dragging victims' names through the mud. I know you. I know what you're about. I've got your fucking number. Um, and you know, if you want to, you want to start some shit, well, here I am. Like, there's nothing I can do about it. They're the predators. So it is what it is. Uh, dig LVMPD, go fuck yourselves. Oh, we're going to, we're going to try and speed run Popo's Bazaar tonight. I don't, I don't want to be doing Popo's for like two and a half hours tonight. I just, uh, I'm just not feeling it, man. I'm just not feeling it. We're, we're, we're getting, we're kind of like in the 10, 10 story range now. Like we're kind of, we're coming a little close, a little close. Um, let's see. Um, this one, I think I need to move over here. Yeah. I need to move over here. Um, so let's see. Yes, uh, Anna, uh, An- Anias Pagan, I think it's Anias Pagan. Um, anyway, um, she's a woman from the Bronx. NYPD got pissed at Anias um, when she um, was recording them arresting her cousin. So, what did NYPD do? Um, well, she was a 18 year old high school senior. And they slapped cuffs on her and um, uh, planted uh, uh, planted uh, uh, bogus. Uh, they put a uh, they put a gun on her. They put a drop gun on her, and planted uh, like they planted a firearm on her for bogus gun uh, possession charges. Um, so yeah, 
Yeah, the 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 New York uh, NYPD set up an 18 year old female high schooler with bogus firearms charges because she was filming them arresting her cousin. Um. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, by the way, this isn't speculation. There's surveillance footage, as always. As always, there's surveillance footage. Um, fucking the 22 caliber firearm, the 22 caliber handgun that uh, the police said she had was found to have neither her fingerprints nor DNA, nor did she have any gunshot residue on her. And they, uh, you can see in the surveillance, um, uh, that they plant the gun. But according to NYPD detective Richard Clary, who said on his sworn affidavit court papers that he saw the gun drop from her waistband, um, he, um, as a detective, has been found twice, not once, but twice, once, but twice, by two separate judges in two separate cases to have given unreliable testimony, meaning he lied. He lied under oath. Um, this is literally a classic case of planted evidence, um, and fucking like, you know, what do you want? What do you want? Ah, oh, NYPD, I swear. Yes. Here is Daniel Bannister. <laughs> Wither, you'd think there is. You'd think there would be, right? Um, yes, Wilhelm, just a couple of bad apples. This is Daniel Bannister and, and his wife, Catherine. Um, Daniel and Catherine Bannister here. Oh. <sighs> Daniel was charged with killing his infant daughter in 2018. He was released from county jail this January because, well, the judge excluded a whole bunch of evidence. Um, he, three-month-old Haley Bannister... He was charged with murder and endangering the welfare of a child that resulted in the death of his daughter. His wife was charged with reckless manslaughter as well as endangering. Uh, she also was freed from jail shortly before her arrest. Um, I'm sorry, shortly after her arrest. She was a teacher at a charter school in, uh, as well in Trenton, New Jersey. Um, sure, sure, her license, her teaching license, luckily has been suspended. Um, she, the daughter, um, suffered nine skull fractures, broken ribs, bleeding in her brain. Uh, Daniel here inflicted the injuries and Catherine knew about it and failed to report him or take the daughter to the doctors. Um, yes. Um, the, uh, yeah. Yeah, basically. Um, so... Haley was taken, I'm trying to get the timeline in straight in my head. Haley was taken via ambulance to, hosp, to the hospital in Mercer County, December 5th of 2018. Jesus Christ, this fact that this case has gone on this long. If this was any of us, oh yeah, yeah, dad's a cop. Yeah, dad's a cop. Yeah. Um, Daniel here is a, is a police officer, or was, or is, or whatever. Um, so... 2019 May, after um, after Haley was taken to the hospital via ambulance, um, the prosecutor's detective started investigating that day when the hospital staffers reported her, uh, Haley's injuries. The girl died six days later um, in a hospital, but right at the beginning of the investigation, um, the uh, the detectives arrested and confiscated the couple's cell phone and applied for a warrant to examine the calls and texts. 
um, the information in the cell phones was, quote, key to charging the couple in 2019, which revealed extensive communications about Daniel abusing the, uh, his daughter. The Middlesex uh, County Medical Examiner's Office ruled in May of 2019 that Haley died from blunt impact trauma to the head and that her death was a homicide. This September, though, Mercer County Judge Darlene Peretska suppressed the cell phone evidence, ruling that the detectives did not have probable cause of criminality to access the phone. This is according to Daniel's attorney. The prosecutor's office has appealed that decision to the state's appeal at, uh, appellate division, uh, and oral arguments are scheduled. Um, the prosecutor's spokesperson, of course, is declining since motion is up, uh, is uh, pending appeal. Um, but the, uh, the defense is arguing that Haley died, Haley was ill and died uh, from natural causes, not child abuse. You know, natural causes that cause nine skull fractures, broken ribs, and internal bleeding of the, the brain. Um, so, you know, yeah. I, I, the leeway that cops get, the leeway that cops get. It is astounding. Maybe she fell down a mine shaft. Uh, oh yeah, spontaneous cranial implosion. It's a, totally a thing. Um, so I don't know how many of you were following the lacrosse team story, but. Um, <clears throat> The Delaware State University lacrosse, women's um, lacrosse team um, was traveling, and was it Georgia? It was Georgia. It's always fucking one of these idiots. Um, <clears throat> Georgia law enforcement claimed that they stopped the bus for a minor traffic violation, and that um, deputies, uh, they, the sheriff's department claimed that they did not search the lacrosse team's personal items and that it was a minor traffic violation and that no civil liberties were um, violated whatsoever. Now, now, the Delaware State University, uh, Delaware State University is a predominantly and historically, historically black university. Um, and the Delaware State lacrosse team is most assuredly predominantly black. So when those deputies took, stepped one foot on that bus and saw that they had a uh, bus full of young black athletes, I'm sure those Georgia redneck racist pieces of shit basically fucking lit up. They're just cha-ching. Like, they, they knew they were going to be on something. They were traveling home from a game from Florida by contracted bus. They got pulled over, and the deputies did what the deputies did. They, uh, quote one of the players, they didn't really ask us. They informed us of what they were going to do, and no one questioned them. We just left them to rattle through our stuff. Uh, a player on the bus that was heard to ask, how did we go from being in the wrong lane to going through our bags? Well, he stopped y'all. He didn't stop y'all for a traffic violation. He stopped the driver for a traffic uh, uh, violation. I don't know what that means. But nothing was illegal was disco uh, discovered. But the um, deputies, of course, maintained that they did not search the lacrosse team, uh, yeah, the lacrosse team's uh, bags playing. whatsoever. Um, of course... Deputies. Stopping and searching the bags of a, a, a on board a shush shush. So, this is this is them using the dog, of course, to try and get. And oh look, the driver's black too. I can't imagine that having anything to do with it. And oh, uh, they didn't search any of their stuff, by the way. They this is all just uh, bags that happen to be out on the ground, I guess. Um, that they just happen to pull up next to. They didn't really ask us. They informed us what they were going to do. Mm, yeah. Nobody said anything. If there is anything in y'all's luggage, we're probably going to find it. They didn't really ask. Hmm. Interesting. Here we are, fucking searching all the bus. It's funny how, you know, deputies will say one thing and then we'll catch the uh, body cam footage, and it is the exact opposite, time and time again, of what they say they didn't do. 
Uh, police dogs are animal abuse. Um, police dogs are animal abuse. That is true. Oh, so Cobb County, Georgia. Let's stay in Georgia for a second here. Cobb County, Georgia. The uh, solicitor's office has charged the uh, Georgia sheriff uh, of uh, Bleckley County. Um, groped a judge at a sheriff's convention. I I don't even imagine. I mean, Jesus Christ. I, I, I fucking, oh fuck, I know a cop there. Uh, well, congratulations. They may be moving up in the world. Um, the judge was a guest at the conference. Um, and the, uh, Bleckley County Sheriff Chris Cootie, C O O D Y, um, is literally gr- like groped a fucking judge. Uh, Brown, the judge, uh, um, Fucking uh, Thomas Brown, not the judge, but Thomas Brown, who was the witness to the judge, um, said that Hatchet was a guest at the conference and Cootie, uh, Cootie groped Hatchet as he was introducing her to the sheriffs at the Renaissance Atlanta Waverly Bar. Brown said three sheriffs came up to, to, the, uh, to the stand-up table, including Cootie and the president of the Georgia Sheriff's Association. Brown said he turned his head away from Cootie and Hatchet as they were talking. Quote, as I turned to my left to focus back on the two of them, I saw his hand go down on her left breast. I grabbed his arm, threw it off her chest, and basically said, what the fuck do you think you're doing? Doing. And that's basically where it ended. She was my as uh, she was there as my guest, so obviously I was upset, obviously mad, and he was obviously intoxicated. So fucking Georgia sheriff at a convention for sheriff gets drunk and fucking just randomly walks up to a, ju- a female judge and just starts gra- grabbing her tit because he can. I apparently. Oh, you live in Cobb County. Hmm, interesting. Congratulations. Your former judge is a fucking psychopath. Uh, actually, um, not Cobb County. It would be Bleckley County is where the, the psychopath fucking sexual assaulter. Your county is actually charging the sheriff. So congratulations, uh, DeZarco. Your county's fucking doing something about it. Um, but, you know, yeah. Hey, <laughs> why are you so judgy? Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Is this, uh, I think this is the, this, yes. Um, I think this is guy, you know what? I'll, I'm going to, I want to, I want to research that story more. Uh, well, okay. I'm here too. Well, <laughs> fair enough. Correct. Uh, touching a judge is a good way to fuck yourself over. I know, right? Um, oh, this is just, this is the roughest story of the fucking, you know what? We'll end on it too. Oh, that may be, you know what? This may be, oh man. This is, all right. Yes. Uh, we'll end on this one so we can end on a high note and then there we'll go from there. Um, okay. So. Let's get these these fucking photos up because y'all need to see them. All right. So on the left is Felipe Santos and on the right is Terrence Williams. Um, so Terrence and Felipe um, fucking, I mean... Why people bother when I'm in the middle of shit? Um, Terrence and Felipe were um, in... um, They were last seen... (laughs) All right, fair enough, Marcus. Uh, Terrence uh, Terrence and uh, Felipe uh, were last seen getting into the back of a patrol car of a a Collier uh, County Sheriff's deputy by the name of Stephen Calkins. Um, They disappeared shortly thereafter. That, that was the last that was ever seen of these two men. Um, no investigation has ever been done. No one's ever looked into these men's appearance. Um, it is one black man and one, uh, one undocumented immigrant. And they are poof. 
<sighs> so, Starlight Tour. Marcus, 100% of Starlight Tour. Yeah. Yeah, like that's that's what's suspected. So. <sighs> So I'm going to just speed run this because this is going to be rough. <sighs> A 10-year-old girl in March um, A 10-year-old Chicago girl in March called 911 Scared, terrified, worried for her safety, stating that her father was sexually and physically abusing her. The police responded and found that the off-duty officer, who was a member of the force for 21 years, was her father. He was taken into custody for aggravated criminal sexual abuse by family member, but by the end of the day when he was actually charged, it was f only for domestic battery, a misdemeanor. Um, he was essentially given a slap on the wrist and let go. Um, yeah. <sighs> Missing body cam footage as well, by the way. Um, yes. Prosecutors refuse to tr uh, pursue sexual abuse charges. No one knows why. Nobody has any reasons. Um, the, the state attorney's office merely has stated that uh, the evidence was insufficient to meet our burden of proof to file f felony charges. Um, that's it. That's all they'll say. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, Rev, hold on to that moment of silence because this is the rough one. I'm going to read this one. <clears throat> Straight up. Ah, thank you, Cricks. DA are cops. Prosecutors are cops. Judges are cops. Corrections officers are cops. Candace Gill, 38, and Edward Williams allegedly fled shortly before officers arrived at the Walmart in Monroe, Louisiana, uh, following a report of shoplifting. The pair fled with their baby and employees told officers that they had stolen baby care items. <sighs> when the officers later found Gill and Williams' vehicles, they said that the, uh, the driver turned onto the highway, accelerated. According to the court documents that we have, the officer pursued, activated his lights and siren, but the vehicle failed to stop. Shortly afterward, the car crashed and Gill is alleged to have fled while police supposedly treated the passengers. The baby girl was taken to a nearby hospital. She later was pronounced dead due to her injuries sustained in the crash. Gill was later captured at an apartment complex, transferred Charged with two counts of manslaughter, aggravated obstruction of highway, four counts of negligent injury, theft, and traffic violations. <sighs> yeah, no. AJ, that's fine. That's fine. Um, If you see, yeah, if you just a, as a word of advice, if you see, if you see someone stealing something associated with child care or food, no, you didn't just shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up. 
If those stupid fucking Walmart employees had realized that they're stealing from a God fucking God forsaken corporate uh, corporation, shut the fuck up. None of this matters. All of that is insured. It's all covered by Walmart's own self-insurance policy. It's not going to affect the bottom line. It does not matter. Just fucking twiddle your stupid fucking thumbs and look the other way because you got a, you got a baby killed. Yeah. Yeah. You got a baby killed. Congratulations. That's, that's, I actually do put that on the Walmart employees. I do. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. None of that mattered. None of that mattered. It was baby formula and some wet wipes and some diapers. Shut the fuck up. You got a fucking baby killed because Walmart's loss prevention. Fuck you. Yeah. No, AJ, it's fine. I don't, I don't Um. Oh, it's, yeah, it's not even, yeah, Nick, it's not even, it's probably not even that. It's, it's just, it's a non-issue. It's a non-issue. It's a non-issue. Yeah, they, they make it up. No. Yeah. Um, it's just, oh, my God. Store employee led to George Floyd's death, too. Yeah, I know. Right. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <sighs> but we're going to end Popo's Bizarre Adventures on a little bit of a high note. <laughs> it's a little bit of a high note. It's not it's not the world changing, but. Let me introduce you um, to Border Town Police Chief Brian Pesky. Pesci? Could be Pesci. Could be Pesky. Don't know. Either way, uh, let me introduce you to Police Chief Brian here. Uh, Police Chief Brian. uh, (laughs) Police Chief Brian... Uh, was out driving his Chevy Silverado, um, drunk as a skunk, and he got into a little fender bender and, you know, dry, uh, drove off. And, but he decided that he was clearly, like, he, he, he had too much. He knew he had too much. So he pulled his truck over, he got out, he laid down behind the truck, and he went to sleep. He just decided to take a nap. Um, hey. Is it not? Where's my Learn board? I don't know. Oh, Twitch chat is not connected. That's, uh, that's weird. Open. Authorize. Uh, redirect. Send token. Connect. Done. Yes. All right. There we go. Sorry that didn't pop, AJ. Um, AJ just raided everyone. So, yeah, the, the shout out doesn't work for Impossible's fucking name for some reason. I don't know what the deal is, but I've just been putting his fucking link in chat. <laughs> like literally Twitch's API system hates, hates uh, AJ. There's the link. Go follow him if you're not already. So yeah, this is, this is um, police chief Brian. Um, he, <laughs> he, just, he decided to just have a little nap in the middle of the road. Um, after he got into a bit of a, a, you know, bit of a fender bender, bit of a, bit of a hit and run, um, you know, but yeah, yeah. (sighs) Popo's Bizarre Adventures, everyone. 